Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got how to make um uh, 99 Nights in a Forest or how to so, I forgot what it's called 99 Nights in a Forest, whatever it's called. And so I'm not gonna lie, you guys, it's been like two weeks since I recorded a video, so sorry guys, I'm trying my best. It was a little busy with college stuff. Got I got more videos coming for y'all, so my bad. But yeah, so this is part four. I honestly I already had this stuff ready to go like literally two weeks ago. I just didn't have the time. I just didn't have a chance to really record it and stuff um so yeah so one i made it to the campfire now works um if you drop burnable items on it it will now um light up and everything the fire will be enabled and there's and it'll track how much like however much the campfire is lit i guess you want to call it and then something some other people said um the amount of items that the player has is now tracked so however many things they have inside of their um their sack as well as a cap on the amount of on the maximum amount of stuff you can have inside the sack so yeah if you guys find any bugs anything else you want to see let me know as you guys already know i will keep continue with the series as long as you guys continue to show it love and support okay let's go ahead and get straight to the video okay so this one shouldn't take us too long so go ahead start a gui core gui let's open up our core gui by the way we are inside of the map place not the lobby we are inside of our map place right so we're going to need to create two new text labels one for the campfire and another for the sack amount so Let's create a new text label, and then I'm just going to drag this to be, like, kind of up here in the corner. So this is going to be our campfire text label. This is going to display however much the campfire is. So we're going to say campfire text label, right? Campfire text label, bold text, rich text, scale the text. I'm going to set the text color to, i say a nice yellow, kind of goldish color. Text, text stroke color will be black. Text stroke transparency will be set to zero. Um, scale text. Then by default, we can set this to like 0 out of 100, but you can set it to whatever you want. But I'm just going to do 0 out of 100, and then I'm going to set the background transparency to... Or actually, wait, before I do that, actually, I'm going to... Um, or no, actually, no, yeah, no, let's go ahead and do that. So set the background transparency to 1. Then I'm going to insert another text label into the core GUI. This time, I'm going to drag this down to the bottom right, but obviously make sure it's not overlapping with the um, sack text label. So this is going to be your amount. So you're, you're just going to name this sack amount text label so keep track of how much stuff is inside of the sack so sack amount text label right um background transparency can be set to one we can set we can do you know bold text rich text scale the text we can do white text color um texture color will be black texture transparency can be set to zero and then by default you don't need to have you don't need to have any text by default so boom and then we're done with all the ui additions on to the next thing so inside of the log right or so that so you want to do this for every single object inside of the object folder that you want to be burnable what you're going to do is you're going to insert a number value into the log like well for whatever object it is you want to make burnable but for me it'll be the log you want to insert a number value right and then you're going to name this number value to burnable right this is how you'll know an object is burnable the value will be set to how much it'll add to the campfire you know i'm pretty sure in the actual game if you try to burn logs i think it adds like 15 or 20 maybe I'm just going to set mine to 15. You can set yours to whatever you want. It's up to you, right? And then let me just double check to make sure everything's good. Okay. So yeah, I said that's whatever you want. So it's going to be a number value. Set it to whatever value you want it to be. Then one other, one other little thing I did inside of the campfire, I renamed. All I did was just rename the logs to camp log one, camp log two, camp log three. The reason for that is because the fire is obviously inside of one of, of them, not all of them. So I needed them to have different names so that I could access them via the script. So the fire, all we're going to do is we're just simply going to enable it when it has enough and then disable it when it doesn't have enough. Or I don't know if I actually did that. Maybe I'll do that in the next part. But anyway, um, so yeah, so that's all I did for the campfire. And then we can just move on to the script. So open up the core local script. Scroll down to where we equip and unequip the sack. We're just going to add a few things. So go right here. Then you're just going to say core GUI dot sack amount text label dot visible is set to true. Then vice versa down here for gui that stack amount text label dot visible is equal to false right then we're going to go ahead and create a new function right here we're going to say player dot sack amount this is the value we're going to use to keep track of how much items the player currently has inside of their stack dot changed connect function oh my bad function close parentheses press enter right and then you're going to say core gui you're just going to update it you're going to say core gui dot stack amount text label dot text is equal to player dot sack amount dot value dot dot quotation marks slash then dot 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 quotation marks and then here you'd put whatever it is your maximum amount is in your game i'm just gonna put five because that's how much is that's the max for the, the actual game then after our user input service function right here 
We're then going to create a variable for the campfire. So we'll say campfire is equal to workspace, wait for child, campfire, right? And then, okay, that is not a campfire. Campfire, right? Then we're gonna set up a function. We're gonna say campfire dot current amount dot change to connect the function, close parentheses, press enter. Then you'll say, oh my bad, press enter, then you'll say core GUI dot campfire text label dot text is equal to amount or oh my bad supposed to be amount in the parentheses not close parentheses amounts my bad so yeah then amount dot the dot quotation marks slash uh, i'm going on the outside dot 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 and then uh campfire dot max amount dot value boom so that's simple now we can move on to the server server side of things so open up the server script then up here we're going to add a new variable um we're going to create a variable for the sound service as you can see i have a campfire start sound i get all i got all my sounds from the toolbox go to the toolbox literally go to the toolbox go to audio and then just search up like fire or campfire whatever the case and then just find your sound put it inside a sound service and then we'll just play it so more. you don't have to do that though if you don't want to so we're going to go right here press enter create a variable for the sound service so ss is equal to game get service sound service right then we're going to create the sack amount value we can just go ahead and just copy and paste this to save ourselves some time so let's copy and paste the full hunger value so just copy that go after the inventory folder and then paste that then you just want to simply rename this to sack amount then i'm just going to copy and paste so control c control v control v control v control v it'll be a number value and then by default this should be set to zero and stuff that should be the same for everybody because this is the starting amounts for however many items you have unless like you're player automatically starts like unless you have it in your game where players automatically start with things in the inventory but i wouldn't really understand the point of that so you know but y'all do y'all so moving on um so right here where we have the unfinished campfire uh code we're gonna finish this so right we're looking for the object type value that's how we know it's an object um and we also need to say hit find first child burnable which means you know as it can be burned so then create a variable for the object which is equal to hit right then we'll say campfire dot current amount dot value plus equal object dot burnable dot value and then we'll just do one we'll just do a simple check we'll say if campfire dot current amount dot value is greater than or equal to or sorry greater than campfire dot max amount dot value enter then campfire dot current amount dot value is equal to campfire dot max amount dot value if you're confused what this means it pretty much means this Let's say the campfire is at 100, and then you try to throw on another log or whatever object that's burnable, and then you try and, and then you um right, and it's already at max 100. You obviously don't want it to go to like 105, 120. You don't want it to go past 100 or whatever your set max amount is, right? So this is to prevent that. If the number does exceed that after adding it, then it'll simply set it back to whatever the uh, max is. Then after this if statement, you're gonna of course destroy said object. So object destroy, right? Then you go right here and we're going to uh, we're going to create a new function. We're going to say campfire dot current amount dot change connect function in parentheses. You're going to put amount, press enter. Then you're going to say if amount is greater than zero and campfire dot camp log one. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to I'm going to say camp log one because inside of my this is where the fire is. Yours may be in a different thing. It doesn't have to be named the same. Like just just find wherever your fire is. So I'm just going to say fire right dot enabled is equal to false. We don't want this to run like we don't want it. We don't want the we don't want it to enable it when it's already enabled. So then we'll just say campfire dot camp log dot fire dot enabled is set to true. And then we'll of course play the campfire start sound. Then we'll say else if amount is less than or equal to zero, enter. Then that means we need to disable the fire. So campfire dot camp log one dot fire dot enabled is set to false, right? So this is just pretty straightforward. If the current amount is greater than zero and it's not currently enabled, then it will um then it will uh, just disable it. Oh, I guess for this wait no, that wouldn't matter actually, because it would only change if it increases or wait. Actually, it doesn't matter anyway. So yeah, so um, if it's greater than zero, start, it'll set the campfire. If it's not already started, and then if it's not, then it, and then if it's less than zero, or equal to zero, then it'll just disable it, right? So then from there, we're going to scroll down to our core events, the on server event stuff. We have the inventory right here, and then what we're gonna do is before uh, we're gonna go into the uh, if statement for the inventory add for the add event. Then we're gonna go after this object variable, right? 
So right here, then we're going to say if player dot sack amount dot value is greater than or equal to five, enter return. This makes it so that players can't purchase, um, or not, sorry, not purchase, can't store more things than the maximum. This is going to be your max value. So, so set this to whatever you want your max value to be, and it won't allow them to have more than this number. So they won't have more than five. Then right here, after we, let's say, why is my code not formatted properly? Hold on. Because it's like, it's like moving all over the place from that selection. Okay. Anyway, um, so we're going to go right here, right? Before we destroy the object, right? We're going to say player dot sack amount dot value plus equal one. Because keep in mind, this is how we keep track of how many items are inside of the inventory. Or, well, in our sack, I should say. Right? Then, of course, when we drop something, we want to, um, you're going to go after, after this end right here. We obviously want to do the vice versa. So player dot sack amount value less than equal to one right very simple straightforward let's go ahead and test to make sure this works as always if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models just simply read the description and you can find find out how to gain access to that okay i take the axe right and then swing at the tree okay cool now here's what i'm gonna do oh whoa they're rolling let me so i'm gonna store them right i'm gonna store them so as you can see it's keeping track of how much of how many items i currently have now if i drop one um okay it's a bit interesting why isn't it wait why isn't it catching on fire burnable did i, I just spell that right all right hold on guys let me just double check yep if hit dot oh my bad my bad guys my bad uh, one thing, one thing. I made this before we actually get to this part. Sorry, not supposed to be a hit dot parent. My bad. Because I assumed it was going to be a character touching it. So go back and then remove the dot parent. Right, my bad. Okay, so let's try this again. So we go up to it. Right? We chop down the tree after a few swings. Okay. Right, so we have four, right? Now, if I go over and I drop one, you can see? Now, keep in mind, it, the only reason it disappeared so quickly was because, like, I dropped it literally right on top of it, as you can see. 15 out of 100, right? Now, let's, let me, I'm gonna drop one and then I'm gonna uh, duplicate it. I'm gonna duplicate this real quick. So if I, right, make a whole bunch of logs, notice how I can only pick up to five. I can't pick up a sixth. If I drop one, then I can pick this one up, right? Because it's a maximum amount, right? So yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave a like and subscribe. Let me know if you guys find any bugs, anything. Um, you guys already know the drill. Continue the show to series love and support, and I will continue to um continue to drop more more and more videos for you guys on the series. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave like and leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.